Welcome back to everyone's favorite series, Mock the Mock, where I take a look at someone else's mock draft and I mock it, giving you my thoughts, views, and perspective. And oh boy, this is a banger. This is a banger. This is Jordan Reed from the Draft Network, probably my favorite analyst currently who covers the draft. Him and like Mike Renner, like those are like my two favorite guys right now when it comes to uh, their their takes when it comes to the draft. And oh man, if you're seeing this, if you ever see this, I'm a fanboy. Straight right here. But what's crack a lacking? It's your boy Brosh Mode, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. And as always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. We got a lot of mocks to mock this week. I'm so, everyone and their mom said, hey. Let's throw a mock draft out there. And I'm, I love reacting to these. It seems like y'all love them. So show the video some love. But let's go ahead. Let's get into the nitty, the gritty. I'm assuming either this is current Vegas betting odds when it comes to draft order or maybe um, current stand-ins. It really doesn't matter. Draft order really doesn't matter. Because it's all going to change by the end of the year. <laughs> well, let's go ahead. Let's take a look. This is all about the pers uh, the, the prospects and highlighting who's doing well so round one one rounder i'm gonna leave a link in the description below and his twitter handle go show him some love dude if you love the draft then you're gonna love this guy's content the lions they're going Kayvon thibodeau i always want to say thibodeau but it you don't it's a silent h uh it makes total sense just this is kind of like the popular pick because i mean he is probably the best prospect in this class the dude is an Iron Man. He's got a motor that doesn't stop. We saw that in 2020. Injuries have kind of slowed him down this year. But we saw from the get-go in that Fresno State game, strip, sack, led to a touchdown for the offense. Like, oh, the guy's great. You could do a lot of different things um, for the if you're the Lions. Like, Trey Flowers, he's, he's a heavy contract. You could get rid of it. Or you could hold on to him, and he's like this chess piece. You could play along the defensive line. Uh, I think Rom uh, Romeo Aquara, he is a very capable number two edge rusher. So, yeah, and Goff, he's been playing good. He, he might not be the long-term solution, but in a draft class where the quarterbacks are kind of, yeah, I, I, Goff, I don't mind keeping him. All right, let's keep this train rolling. Derek Stanley going to the Jets. Again, this just makes sense. Uh, the Jets, they really don't have a good cornerback group there. They don't have a lot of depth. They don't have a lot of talent. Derek Stanley, uber athlete. Everyone wants to knock on him. Well, he didn't play Devontae Smith too well. Not a lot of guys did. Oh, well, he got lit up against UCLA. Again, the t I think the two uh, receptions that he got lit up on were in the slot playing off coverage that's not that's not ideally what you do with Derek Stanley you like this guy in the face of the opposing number one but he's rebounded since he played pretty uh pretty solid uh two games against uh, uh I think it was like Manassas State basically like some FCS level schools but yeah no he's wonderful man he's wonderful great quarter cornerback class by the way on to the next Jacksonville Jaguars let's see if I can predict this it's probably Evan Neal right Kyle Hamilton holy moly uh I don't mind this pick whatsoever like Kyle I think Evan Neal makes a lot of sense he's he's played left tackle very well this season Cam Robinson uh, by no means is the future there Jawan Taylor your hope like he hasn't looked too much different from that sophomore year where it was kind of a down year for him after showing a lot of I would say promise at the tail end of his rookie year but um wow man uh, like, dude, Hamilton's a really good prospect. Really good prospect. Uh, I mean, what do you do here? Like, uh, they got Andre Sisco. I like Andre Sisco a lot. Uh, he might take a minute to develop. Uh, pairing up with Hamilton, because uh, let's be I'm not a big Rashawn Jenkins guy. I thought it was kind of like, if you were going to spend that money on Jenkins, why not go get John Jones, who's much better? But, hey, man, if this is a top guy on your board, you go and get him. I'm not going to disagree with that. Real quick, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is a wonderful place. If you want to go make a little extra 
Cash Mula Baby playing some fantasy football. You can do week to week best ball leagues that are worth up to fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. You could do player prop bets. They got a lot of options, and it's not just football, but other sports as well. When you use promo code Broschmo, you get ten dollars added to your ten dollar deposit. So once you deposit ten dollars, you get another ten added to that. That equals twenty. So go ahead, go make some money playing. Well, fantasy football, something I hope you're good at, but uh, it supports the channel. It helps me out. So go ahead. Help me help you help me. Back to the video. Uh, Texans. This is where they go quarterback Malik Willis. He is currently my top quarterback. Makes a ton of sense. The guy probably has the highest ceiling of any of the quarterback prospects in this class uh, with Spencer Radler having his struggles. Uh <laughs> And then Sam Howell, obviously, a lot of people are down on Sam Howell. I'm not. I, I, he's, he doesn't got a lot of talent around him. Let's be honest with that. Uh, Matt Corral, dude, he's gonna. We're gonna see. We're gonna be able to tell a lot from that Alabama game. But currently, Malik Willis, I think, is the top quarterback in this class. If you're the Texans, take the top quarterback. Makes a ton of sense. Davis Mills, yeah, okay, he he had a good first half against the Panthers. He was a third round pick. Uh, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. This has to be Evan Neal, right? Yes, it is. Evan Neal, man. Riley Reef, he's a one-year deal. He's going to be gone after this season. Evan Neal, we saw him play right tackle very well in 2020. He's been playing left tackle extremely well. So whatever you want to do with him and Jonah Williams, you can kind of do whatever you want. Pick makes a ton of sense. Next here, we got the Atlanta Falcons quarterback, Sam Howe. Woo, I like this. Uh, Matt Ryan, man, rough. He This is actually the lowest yards per, uh, per, I guess, per target, per attempt. He has had, in recent memory, at least over the last five years, uh, get that quarterback in the future. You could probably get by with Matt Ryan for another year. If not, you could probably, you could probably dish him for some pretty good compensation. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know what else, what what more do you want me to say? I like Sam Howe, man. I like Sam Howe. He's got a huge arm. He's really not helped out by the guys around him. Like Josh Downs has been probably his only real big threat target. The offensive line's not that good. The defense, they're come, they're not doing him any any help either. I mean, look at what Georgia Tech just did to him. And Georgia Tech, uh, low key, kind of a solid defense. On to the next. This is the Giants. Drake Jackson. Oh, oh man. All right. I understand. I love Drake Jackson. It's just I wanted to see more consistency from him. And we have seen a bit more this year. Like, he's coming off a really good game against Oregon State. And you might be like, oh, that's Oregon State. Yo, Joshua Gray, left tackle. He's kind of good. Watch out for him. But... Uh, for me, it's not enough to really be at the top of this class. Like the next two guys I probably have in my edge class are um, Kingsley, Aneg Bari, and Aiden Hutchinson. I think those guys are really good. They like they're just they're physical upside. They're violent. They're powerful. They move men against their will. I love that. Drake Jackson. He is he athletically great. Great movement skills. Uh, I think he, we're gonna. I think. How he, how he does against maybe Arizona State or UCLA that will tell a lot more about how far he's come in terms of bringing it from like down to down. Like I talked about Thibodeau, uh, Thibodeau being this Iron Man, this guy that his, his gas is never on empty. Jackson's kind of runs half full, you know? So I get it. It's a good scheme fit. I mean, can you imagine him across from Aziz? Like that'd be kind of fun. But yeah, like there's no denying the the high end play of Jackson is top ten worthy. It's just I want to see it more. The Eagles they go Andrew Booth, uh, corner man. It makes a ton of sense. Uh, Steven Nelson he's on a one year deal. Uh, they drafted Zach. Uh, was it McPherson? I felt like he was more of a slot just in terms of his size, but. Uh, and I mean, they're playing Maddox there anyway, so they could definitely grab some more help. Like Booth is phenomenal, man. This guy is really good. Like athletically, he's right up there. I think with Stanley, very quick. He could really mirror anybody in this class. Um, in terms of like, 
even when he gets beat, I think he puts himself in good situations to make plays on the ball. Like, just dude's just really good. This is a really good cornerback class uh, for me. Like, I think you could easily fit like the top five corners in the top fifteen in this class. All right, let's keep it going. Giants, they go Kenny and Green. Ooh, Kenny Green had a rough, rough uh, week at the office against Arkansas. Uh, I don't know. If part of that is. Just Texas A&M kind of like moving him everywhere because he was playing left guard come uh, before this season. Then they moved him right tackle for the first two games, kicked him into right guard. And then in this Arkansas game, he mainly played right guard, but they kicked him out to left tackle for, I think, like 20 some snaps where he got kind of eviscerated. Like he only he's only allowed like six pressures on the season. Four of them came in that Arkansas game. It was a poor game um, for me. A guy like uh, Icky uh, Ikwanu out of NC State, he's flying up my board just because he is, like, athletically for a guy his size is pretty uh, darn good, and he has looked really good in pass protection. Like, a big upgrade. Like, he he handled Clemson this past week. He played over 100 snaps, too. Um so like greens and i'm not i'm not like all out on green don't get me wrong this tackle class it's kind of like after neil it's kind of, it, it really you really have to ponder on who is this next guy green athletically i think would be great in like this outside zone blocking scheme somewhere where he can really move i think he's great when he's in when he's moving but um i don't know if green be the guy for me at this pick and then the washington football team go matt corral we're gonna find out a lot a lot about Matt Corral against Alabama. Washington, they go quarterback. Taylor Heineke, I think he's a fine backup. I think he's done He's done a com, uh, commemorable job filling in for Ryan Yeet Fitzmagic himself. But, uh, yeah, Corral's great, dude. This guy, he's got some low-key escapability. Like, I don't think he's a great athlete, but, like, he maneuvers the pocket very well. He, I, I would say he's a plus athlete, but... Guy's got the arm, man. We'll find out against Alabama, man. This is going to be a, like, he's been he's been fire. He's been money. He's been one of the hottest risers, I would say, coming into the season. He's been one of the quarterbacks that probably played the best this, this, this season thus far. And we'll find out if he's the real deal against Bama this weekend. By the way, I'm streaming Alabama Ole Miss. We're going to be doing a uh, watch along. So join me for that this Saturday. Vikings go Kair Elam. Yeah, you know, Brashard Breland is has been, been playing bad football. And uh he actually says it right here. Struggles. Patrick Peterson's on a one year deal. I would love to see Cameron Dansler get a little bit more play, man. Like uh preseason was kind of rough for him and he kind of kind of knocked down the totem pole. I mean, when Chris Boyd passes you on the depth chart, we got some problems. So yeah, they address dressing corner makes a ton of sense. Mike Zimmer's always drafting corner. Like, you could date this back to, like, Mike Hughes. Like, he's always in, in position to draft a corner. So, yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Panthers, they go DeMarvin Leal. Dude, I think I did this maybe in my mock, or maybe it was, uh, I think it was Bengals mock that I was looking at. Yo, Leal falling? Like, this is, can you imagine how crazy that defensive line with, with uh, Brian Burns, with Derek Brown, you got uh, they might bring Hassan Reddick back. If not, you tear uh, Gross Matos more. Even they've been getting they've been getting significant play from Morgan Cox. Like Phil Snow is a great defensive coordinator. He puts he fits his scheme around his players so well. He puts his players in positions to make plays. Leal, a guy that could kick inside, the, you can play on the outside. Has a lot of versatility and. From there, like I just I love it. I love Leo. He's one of my favorite prospects. I take him top ten, in a heartbeat. Uh, thirteen. We got Darian Kennard. Uh, Kennard. Ooh, this is interesting. Man, I. Right. He says he reminds him a lot of Cody Ford. I don't know if that's true, man. Cody Ford, I always thought should have played guard. I think playing him at right tackle was kind of a big woof by the uh the Bills. But yeah, Eric Eric Fisher's on a one year deal. We've seen how great they've been able to like we've seen we've seen guys like Julian Davenport struggle. Sam Tevy would have been any better if healthy. 
Uh, they really do need to solidify that left tackle position. I don't know if Kennard is that guy. Like, he's looked great. He is on pace to double his true pass sets for his career. Just in this just one in this one season, he's been very good. Would he be here that like and I mean the first sentence Jordan Reed puts on here, is he a tackle, is he a guard? I asked the same question. In a tackle class that's pretty murky, maybe you take a shot on this guy. I think mid to late first round is kind of about the uh area I would probably have him. Uh so yeah. Uh I don't love it, but I don't hate it. I'm kind of so-so. Aiden Hutchinson going to the Eagles. Yo, yo, Brandon Graham. Yeah, he's out for the year. Derek Barnett, man, he's probably not with the squad after this season. They got uh, Milton Williams. He's probably going to be more of the interior guy, but a guy that they can put on the outside if they want to. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson just kind of fits what the Eagles have typically liked on the edge. I mean, and this has just been something that you've seen from regime to regime to regime. This is just kind. This kind of is their their taste of pass rusher. Aiden Hutchinson, he's proven this season. He's much more than just an edge setter, an edge defender. This guy really has gotten after the quarterback. He wins with power. He wins with length. He has a lot of fancy hand moves, whether it's push, pull, get out my way. I love it. Um, Aiden Hutchinson, I think he 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 could be top ten. I'd be I think I'm willing to take him in the top ten. Um, him and Kingsley uh, and Egg Barry, and then we got the Chargers going. Adam Anderson, yo, they're going for some cat that just flies off the edge. I think this is a good fit for Drake Jackson. Adam Anderson kind of fits in that same mold. Guy that doesn't really get used in the run game. They're at Georgia. He's a bit undersized. Currently, Georgia lists him at 230. You kind of want him to get at least to that 240, 245 range. But explosiveness, man. He has had, outside of this Vanderbilt Vanderbilt game, where the starters were gone after like 20 snaps, he gets after the quarterback. He has a sack in every game outside of that. Against that again, that Vandy game where, you know, they weren't playing the starters. They, they played the stars for maybe like the first quarter. <laughs> uh, I do like that. I do think getting some edge rush would help out. And then the Raiders, they go Jordan Davis. Man, I'm I'm not going to lie, dude. I may love Jordan Reed. I don't love Jordan Davis. I get it. A lot of people see that upside. He's shown to be a bit better of a disruptor than he, he was last year. But for me, he's still this maybe... This imposing nose run, nose tackle, just run stuff in nose tackle that has a little bit of pass rushing upside, not a ton. Um we saw like he looked he flashed a bit against Clemson, but their offensive line, it's not so good. Uh I feel better if you're taking Davis maybe at the end of the first round. Even then, like I can't I'd be for, my preference is guys like Perion Winfrey, who just get after it. But then again, you kind of question, can this guy stay on the field for the run game? But yeah, I don't know if I'm the Raiders. I don't know if I'm doing this. Uh, I'd be tempted to go with maybe a receiver. Be like, oh, they don't need a receiver. Yeah, they they can they can improve the position. Uh, offensive line, totally be on the table. Like I like Kennard uh, here. Uh, Kem Ikwan, uh, Icky. Uh, I'm just gonna call him Icky. Icky from NC State. I, for me, he's flying up my board. He, he's just been amazing. Uh, maybe you, you go with the guy that can play the interior. Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't love this pick. Patriots, Chris Olave. I kind of like maybe Wilson better for the Patriots, but there's no doubt Olave's outplayed Wilson this season. Olave is probably going to be my top receiver. So if they take a receiver, yeah, why not? Um, Nelson Aguilar, he's what, a two-year deal? So is Kendrick Bourne, right? So they're probably going to have – they need to start looking for their receivers that they want long-term. I don't think either of those guys are long-term. Uh, I wouldn't mind going corner here. Like I really like Sauce, so uh, Sauce Gardner. Uh, Carson Strong, no Spencer Rattler to be seen. I don't think personally Carson Strong's done enough to validate him being a first rounder. Yeah, I agree with that take. Yeah. 
like the pocket poise is better, but I still don't think he handles pressure well. You kind of saw a little bit of it in that California game. Guy's got a strong arm, though, that he can make a ton of throws. Uh, I mean, if you're the Steelers, I mean, really, do you take him? Do you take Rattler? Is there another guy that can may, that maybe fills this spot here? I don't think there is. So, kind of, kind of a tough pick. The Broncos, George Karloftis. Interesting, dude. He's had a banger year, but I don't know, man. Do you bring him in? I mean, Vic or Vic? I was about to say Vic Beasley. Uh, Von Miller. He, he he might be gone after this season. Oh, man. Like, I don't, I don't, I like the fit. I'm just thinking, is there any other way you go here? I don't know if there is. Um, I think just because I personally like the guy better, Kingsley, uh, Aneg Bari would probably be the guy I go with. But Karloftis, man, I think he has been on fire this season he he looks like he's back to his freshman form while last year was just kind of a really felt like kind of a throwaway season for him dealt with injury then he had the uh the rona um or i think he was on the rona list but yeah uh saint spencer oh my gosh how you go from Jameis to radler i don't know about this one I don't know about this one. I'd be willing to take guys like maybe Traylon Burks, Garrett Wilson, because you do worry about the wide receiver position there. Um, I don't know about this one. I get Spencer Radler, like the guy's arm talent. It's there. It's immense. Maybe a guy, maybe Sean Payton can nurture this guy. Oh, man. But it really feels like you're, you're just – it feels like you're at Six Flags. And you're just going from roller coaster to roller coaster, going from Jameis to Rattler is like. I mean, it's hard to it's right now. It's so hard to project Spencer Rattler. I mean, I think I had him fall in my mock draft as well. Tennessee tight ends. There's my boy, Kingsley, an egg Barry baby. Uh, yeah, I think uh, between him, depending on what really Mike Vrabel wants. Like, I really like Nick Benito as well here but uh harold landry he is a free agent at the end of the year so yeah the pass rush really hasn't been that good for uh for um oh my gosh tennessee titans that's who we're talking about um i'm actually gonna go take a quick look at uh exactly how good it has been who's getting home uh, cause I wasn't a big fan of the Bud Dupree pre signing though. He might be there. Well, Harold Landry, hold on, hold the phone. I mean, the guy plays a lot of snaps. Don't get me wrong, but he's probably actually been their most, um, um, most disruptive, uh, player there, but man, yeah, because Bud Dupree, like, he's only, like, he hasn't been that good for that. <laughs> I didn't like that sign to begin with. Yeah. Uh, Danico Autry, though, that was the sign and I really liked. I mean, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean. I mean, I don't know what you do with Dupree's contract, though. Because if you want to bring back Landry... Because Landry's really been the Iron Man of this uh, defense. Like, he, out of the guys up front, he's played the most on the line. Yeah, that's a toughie. That'd be a toughie, bro. Uh, I do like the pick, though. <laughs> uh, Tyler Linderbaum. I love Tyler Linderbaum. Going, uh, are, does this mean they... Give up with him. Give up on Tyler Biotish at center. I know he struggled, but uh, I mean, you could, yeah, you can shuffle because Tyler Tyler Linderbaum's a guy that can play guard as well. I love Linderbaum. For me, Linderbaum is a top top fifteen prospect. But I get it. The interior, it's not really a very valuable position. 
Uh, I mean, you could go defense. I don't mind um, guys like Sauce or McDuffie here at corner. But, man, Linderbaum. Ooh, man, I do love Linderbaum. That's an inch. I've never thought about Tyler Linderbaum for the Cowboys. I think that's interesting. Cardinals, they go Sauce. Sauce is a great fit here. I don't think there's much more to say. Uh, Jets go Mijah Sanders. I like him across from Carl uh, Carl Lawson. I think that's a good fit. So, yeah, I mean, in this draft, it, it kind of makes sense for the Jets to go defensively. So, I guess take whoever your top guy is here. Uh, Sanders probably would be. Um, anyone else that can... No, I really don't. Th I don't think so. I think uh, Sanders is about the only other guy because Nick Benito. I don't think he's a good fit here, and he's probably the only other edge left on the board here. So yeah, no, it makes a ton of sense. Uh, Packers go Jalen Catalan. Oh, I gotta read this sucker. Da, 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 da. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, for me, wide receiver is kind of a very sexy pick. I love Drake London for the Packers because I don't think Devonte is gonna be there. But, oh, man. Because I love, oh, dude, I love, I love Adrian um, Amos. I love Darnell Savage. So, but let's, let's see. I, I know, like, the defense hasn't been all that in a bag of chips. Um, but, I mean, I think... I mean, I really think Savage and Amos have played pretty darn well. Like, oh. Where, who's play? who's been playing the slot? Hasn't been Sullivan or has he been hurt? No, it's been Sullivan. Wow, he struggled. He's, give, he's given up a touchdown. He's given up almost 200 yards through the air. I mean, it's like you could go like kind of like how the Chiefs have done. Or you could even say the Rams and just play these three safety fronts, have these guys maybe rotate, dump it into the, uh, the slot. I, I mean, I love Catalan. He's one of my favorite prospects right now. The guy, and he is, he's proved that he could come in and he could hit too. Uh, I think Daxton Hill will be an interesting thought, especially if you plan on – this guy coming in and like immediately maybe being your main slot guy, but you you know you can trust him as like your center center fielder. I think Hill's kind of an interesting thought here too. Uh, man, Catalan's so good, dude. Oh, so good. Browns Garrett Wilson, interesting, interesting, interesting. I mean Garrett Wilson's still on the board. You kind of take him. Actually, I would love Garrett Wilson here for this Packers pick, but. Uh, I mean, a lot of the edge talent, they've kind of flown off the board. Uh, Tyler Linderbaum, I think, could be a thought here because uh, isn't um, isn't JC a free agent after this year? Or if not this year, next year. So they could part ways with them this offseason. But yeah, no, Wilson Wilson be good pickup here. I like that. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay, Ravens. Icky out of NC State. I've been saying this is a perfect scheme fit for Icky. I don't care if like, whoa, we got, you, you, our guards are kind of set. Then play him at tackle, dude. The dude's been playing well at tackle. It doesn't matter. He's a he's a guy that just fits his scheme perfectly. I really like this pick. Uh, the Bills, they're going Trent McDuffie. He's actually a really good scheme fit for the um the Bills. Um, McDuffie, if like that's the thing, dude. Good players fall in the draft, like. Teams that that maybe want to go with other players just because they feel like their need they they kind of their needs fit with that a bit better. Uh, you're gonna see guys fall like McDuffie could uh, he could be that guy that falls, but perfect fit for the Bills um coverage scheme. Uh, Dolphins go Trevor Penn man. I think I mocked a tackle to the Dolphins uh, in my last mock. I can't remember who. I think I did, um, but. I mean, you could do a lot of fancy things 
with the Dolphins line because Liam Eikenberg, maybe like he hasn't played terrible at left tackle. It just hasn't been good. Maybe you kick him to the right tackle spot. Uh, maybe you have him play left guard. Maybe you take Hunt, who was actually playing pretty, like he was playing pretty solid at right tackle at the end of the, his rookie season. Move him back to right tackle. Um, oh shoot, maybe put Eichenberg on right guard because you got Kinley there, but Kinley ain't that good. Uh, Austin Jackson, that experiment seems like it's failed. Uh, so you can do a lot of different things. Pennon, he's going to be a guy. I think he is eligible for the Senior Bowl. Um, he played extremely well against Iowa State. He he might not be like kind of like the physical specimen that Spencer Brown was, but he's played a lot better in FCS play than Spencer Brown. So yeah, he's definitely a guy to watch out for. Lions take Traylon Burks. Makes a ton of sense. Question is, do you play him in the slot? How often has um, actually, where have they been playing um, Amon Ross St. Brown? Have they been playing him mainly in the slot? Da, 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 da. Um, let's see this. Yeah, it's been either Brown, Brown and Hawkinson have seen the most slot. Uh, yeah, actually, no. Um, Amon Ra, 85% of his snaps are coming in the slot. So, I mean, Burks can play on the outside. He has the size, too. It's just Arkansas really likes playing him in the slot. So the dude has the size, speed. He can be that X wide receiver. So, yeah, I got no problem with that. Mainly playing out wide is uh, Cephas, Raymond, and Benson um, to mix reviews. So, yeah, I think Lions, they have to do something to spice up that receiving core. Then the Kansas City Chiefs, they go Jahan Dotson. Everyone really likes Jahan Dotson. I think just I, I think he might be a better prospect than KJ Hamler, but still that maybe puts him in the second to maybe early third area for me. Um, the guy's special. You do worry about his size. I think his ball skills are a lot better than Hamlo, uh, Hamler. So I just don't like him here at the uh, end of the first round, especially for the Chiefs. They need help on the edge. Maybe you add like a Jordan Battle would be, I think, a solid pick if maybe they move on from the Honey Badger. I mean, they like running three safety sets anyway. Daniel Sorensen's not good, or at least he's not playing great. I know he's a good locker room leader, but um, you just can't have that guy in the field if he's not doing well. Uh, maybe you can maybe dip into this corner class. Granted, the top five corners are off the board. Is there a sixth corner that can emerge here? I don't know if there is just yet. Um, maybe it's like a Roger McCreary. Maybe it's a Darion Kendrick, but he has the character concerns. Like I, th I think Jordan Battle might be the guy I go with here. Uh, in terms of edge, I don't think there's a. I mean, Zach Harrison's kind of a spag type of guy, but he's he's had his struggles this season. So I think I'd go defense instead. Uh, pairing on Winfrey, man, going to the Bucks. I love Winfrey. This guy's been a pass rushing nightmare. He has, dude, Sue, I right, buy one year. He's gone. You get Winfrey, man. Oh, this dude is a menace. He's a monster. I like Winfrey a lot. I like him a lot. Uh, I mean, other places you can go. You could you could question safe secondary in general. Jordan Bow's probably the only other guy you kind of question here. Uh, corner again. I kind of talked about what's the problem with corner right now. There's not a linebacker taken yet in this class. Maybe you take a linebacker. Uh, I mean, Levante David's still playing at a very good level. Uh, but he's on a three-year deal, I think. Three- or two-year deal. So what do you take? Maybe Devin Lloyd, Christian Harris. Those are probably the top linebackers in this class. Uh, I think that's where my, my, my thought process is. But I like Winfrey. I like him a lot, dude. Dude's been a monster. But you let me know what you think about Jordan Reed's mock draft here go ahead show this man some love dude he is a very good analyst i love his takes uh but that's it for the video go ahead do that youtube theme and until next time you be easy my friends later